Welcome back to I don't know the name of this game. Um, hold on. That's a <laughs> really good question. <laughs> hold on. Vampire the Masquerade Quarteries of New York. Uh, you just call it Vampire Masquerade. That's yeah, sure. Long. Yeah. Yeah, welcome back to Vampire Masquerade, everybody. We are in a... Oh, I just finished having some nourishing blood. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and, true. And we're still stuck in this room. Yeah. Waiting for a stranger. Yeah, that is his name, Something. Stranger, yeah. No. To, uh, I, and I really... Well, I don't care if they give him a name. His name's gonna be Stranger. Alright, fair enough. Uh, you ready? Yep, let's go. Okay, next part. You take a few more sips. And then just one, uh, just another one. Suck the, suck on the bag a little more. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> Eventually, you find that <laughs> you empty it entirely. All you look at at the info inside the bag: forty-five milliliter of it. Four hundred and fifty. Four, four hundred and fifty. Sorry. Even with this blandness, it still feels your recognized intoxicating high you felt when. Okay, now I hear that. Oh, yeah, see, that was a problem, Adam. Go ahead. Okay, uh, go back up. <clears throat> An image of the cross crossed your mind, causing you to wince. What have you become? Uh, a vampire? Do you not have vampire stories in this in this uh, universe? It seems like... Uh, Legit there, there's honestly like a lot of shows that I feel like that too like Midnight Mass was the same thing where it's just like a priest came across a vampire and I'm just like he's like oh it's an angel and I'm just like has no one ever read a single vampire book at all yeah like in some universes I'm just like do you guys not have monster stories like you're not seeing where like you should know what these things are anyways you try to piece your thoughts back together. Together, sorry, I said back together. <laughs> make all make sense of all of it when you hear the lock click and see the door open. Standing there is the well dressed stranger you met yesterday. Immaculate suit again. That predatory look like a hawk on the hunt, but somehow more relaxed tonight, so like a tamed hawk, maybe. He got a little collar. Good evening, slept well. He noticed the discard empty bag. Hey, I was saving that asshole. I see you had the bit of my <laughs> snack. Mine. Uh, yeah, you got any more? I did. Got any more? Oh, sorry. Wrong voice. No, and don't expect any sustenance to be this easy to find the next time. Come on. We've got places to be. Get in the car! Or as I like to call it, the Katie Mobile. <laughs> She's just perfect. <laughs> the car is humming in the empty parking lot just outside the door of the cramped room you have spent the day in the man. Motions to it politely, but. With a stern look on his face. Katie Mobile! Get inside. <laughs> the Katie Mobile. Okay, move the way. After real. You take the back seat again, the door locks the strings, and takes the wheel and starts. You know what songs I really like? Like, you know, it's like. People like to say they like the songs, it's all like, oh boy, booty, girls, yeah. I don't care for those. Now my mother, she was a very empowering woman. She good woman. She work hard. She she helped me buy this Cadillac rent. Sorry, rent Cadillac. Uh, it's not mine. It's a lease to own. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to tell you about that. I can see you want a inner monologue to so go ahead. Good, good, thank you. You drive in silence. If you want to be my lover, you got to get <laughs> with my friends. <laughs> Make it last forever. Friendship never. I'm sorry, you say something. <laughs> you keep trying to catch a glimpse. You keep, keep, uh, 
get lives is other familiar street or landmarks throughout the blackened windows. But it's a little, but it's a little use. The car is also soundproof, so all you can hear is a bit of traffic humming in the, in the car's engine. The driver doesn't say anything; it seems to focus on the road. Check the door. Handle. Don't know how to yeah, do this. So here's a story from A to Z. You wanna get with me? You gotta listen carefully. <laughs> we got them in the place who likes it in your face. You got G like MC who likes it on a... Whoa, easy V. Doesn't come for free. She's a real lady. And as for me, ha, you'll see. <laughs> <sighs> you okay back there? <sighs> you didn't have time to think about it before, but you... Down? Come on. Realize neither that you're... Hungry. No, not exactly. It's like a rumble... It's not a rumbling... Stomach that... Grabs your attention. It's a need to start somewhere in your abdomen and spread to your chest, throat, and back of your head. You tried to extract some information out of the man behind the wheel, but you realize you prefer to bask in the afterglow of your last meal. You wouldn't have experienced it, but you spend the rest of the trip lost in your thoughts. A lot of them concern blood. It takes you another 20 or so minutes to get, your de get to your destination. Where have all the good men gone, and where are all the gods? <laughs> Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight the rising odds? Um, Isn't there a white knight upon the fiery steed? Late at night I toss and turn, sing with me! And I dream of what I need! Come on, idiot! I need a hero! I'm holding out for a hero to the morning light! Wait, you know exactly where you are, the nice looking torso you're building. As a logo, you immediately recognize. Ah, what? Oh, sorry. Got uh, really into the music, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Used to hold that collection of baggage device with Sarah and body parts by you can't quite remember the guy's name. He's Brazilian, you think? Fabio something or or, or other? Fabio? Fabio? That's my cousin. <laughs> oh. After me, no sudden movements, please. <laughs> <laughs> you never been inside, not quite your style, but the place has quite the cult. Follow me. You keep racking your brain for more facts, hoping they'll help you with whatever you got into. Two large men in suits flank the door at the gallery. Greg, Gary. Close up. And then the companion nods as they approach you, prompted by the stranger who guides you. You walk inside. Get in. <laughs> Great. Guy. Okay. How's the wife and kids? Not good? Still dead? <laughs> yes, I know. Great joke. <laughs> the gallery is full, which is, which, which is unusual at this hour to say. <laughs> at least. About two dozen faces fill the showroom and a number of waiters navigating the gatherings, serving drinks, and all of them are beneath the guest's attention. The visitors are well dressed for the most part, but it's unclear what they have gathered here for. 
Nobody seems to be particularly interested in the art pieces on the wall, and the atmosphere is polite, unnaturally so. Many guests turn to look at you and the stranger who brought you here. Their glances are fair. Ignore them, they're pretentious bricks. <laughs> Did you know that they have no love for Cindy Lauper? Disgusting. Really? I didn't say you can so, speak. No, so you see an open, you see open contempt on on a few faces and animated interest in others. Most of the eyes in the room calmly observe you as if wishing to appreciate your pre appraise your worth. Appreciate memories come back to you like a bad case of PTSD. How many times before had someone judged you? Impassively or decisively through your art, you share a piece of, you, of yourself to the world and it responds by making you feel like it's always took a lot of effort to not lose your cool and tell everyone to shove their opinions up the collector collective asses. Not looking around, it feels like you've become another art artwork as com commodity to be judged. But it's so, oh God, it's so fucking fast. Commodity. An art as commodity to be judged by a bunch of obscenely wealthy, out of touch assholes. It makes you want to scream. Good evening, Claudia and your child. The noble, cold voice takes you out of your head and back into the situation at hand. The gallery, a crowd of strangers, you being here against your will, for what purpose? The room awaits your response. Uh, good evening, miss. Oh, uh, good evening, uh, miss. You are addressing the Prince of New York City, Helene Panhard, the child of Michaela. Oh, thank you, sh Sharif. My Sheriff. Oh, thank you, my Sheriff, but I am capable Introducing. You are not. She is somewhat plain looking and doesn't seem to possess a great deal of charm, but still, the entire room intently focused on her voice. She's influenced her influence over these people that much, is clear. I don't know why they actually think she's a great influence. She sounds like a fucking Muppet. Oh, you sound like a dick. <laughs> Address me as Prince Child. If you re I realize, if you realize, oh, 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 I realize your introduction into unlife was abrupt. Oh God, and another one of these. Your, your sire left you shortly after. <laughs> unlife. Okay, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Who was about society to think I punished you both for your stands out transgression? I'm right. But I am willing to listen to our lawyer sheriff has to say. Oh, on. About the about the circumstances of your embrace. Okay. Embrace first. What do you say? Give me a second. I'll do that in two seconds. I come home, morning light. My mother says, when you gonna get your life right? Oh, mama dear, we're not the fortunate ones. And the girls, they want to have fun. Oh, the girls just want to have fun. Sorry about that. Uh, 
The phone rings. In the middle of the night, my father yells, What you gonna right, do with your life? Huh? Oh, okay. I think it shall all, it shall all become clear momentarily. You were pushed head first into a world you have not realized the existence of. But before you can partake in it, there needs to be a trial. Oh, wow. Vampires in New York City's never been done before. Eddie Murphy, everybody! <laughs> you are about to be judged by the court of New York City, or dear. Please tell us how you found this fledgling and what happened to you on your way here. Court, friends, is this some kind of secret society make-believe? A trusted informant who has chosen to remain anonymous at this point tipped me off about a suspicious kindred appearing in one of our domains. Upon investigating, I found them gone, but this fledgling remained in their place. Mind you, with a bunch of records of Johnny Cash. Interestingly, there was a Cindy Lauper album there. Very happy to admit that, so it's not complete asshole. But being that he was only a person there, it's not his place. He has no taste. Isai made use of an older haven of one of the clan of the Rose for the embrace. They were even thoughtful enough to leave a local woman for the fledgling to slake his thirst on. Not an important tourist. Despite some reservations, he offered little resistance last night and cooperated on our way to the safe house. I was pleased to not have to force his compliance. We had a quick chat, but wishing to appear, he post haste. I urged him to join me, which he did without struggle. A pleasant trip from departure from my usual routine, I must say. And he also did not interrupt my singing. That is key. His thirst partially slaked with the bagged blood we kept in the safe house. We had a pleasant enough drive here. The story ends with us arriving at Elysium tonight. All eyes are on you again. You take a special interest in one, one of the faces. It's a beautiful woman with a curly, almost blood red hair and a dress to match. You see her whispering to some. What? The speckled man with an absent minded look on his face. Who is she, you wonder? Thank you, cool dear. I take it that this pleasant behavior will take into consideration later. She turns her attention to you. First, there is a matter of your sire, the person who brought you here, who brought you where Claudia picked you up last night. Who were they? Uh, a beautiful man. He was beautiful. Charismatic, charming. Dark hair. A sort of... Damn it. A sort of... Artistic mess. Had an accent I couldn't recognize. He took notice to my art. What a piece, in fact. I wanted to meet him again. I want to meet him again. The last sentence came out almost involuntarily. He immediately feel ashamed, sounding like a sappy puppy. Whimpering after there. Yes, you do want to meet the man again. It, it's an urge deeper than you ever felt. Maybe even love? No, it's not. It was like a 4 out of a 10. I don't know what this guy's going on about. Like, he's just, he's kind of depressing. No. It's idiotic. He would never introduce himself to you. He used you. That asshole just plain used you. For what? Oh, here we go, a lifetime. Yep. Oh, Cordelia, does that sound familiar? No, it does not, or at least not familiar enough. I'll continue the search after we're done here. Now, excuse me. I must listen to my jams. That's you. Uh, he brought my painting. You, you can track him. The guy, he brought my painting at the gallery, didn't pay in cash. I think 
Maybe you could track him that way. Ladies and gentlemen, the one idiot that thinks people can't false identify things, especially in the wondrous world of vampirism. Oh, did your outlook on him change all of a sudden, huh? Huh? Miss, did you bump him up from a four to a six? <laughs> He's like seeing me enjoy your, enjoying your misery. He's like, oh, look at this guy. He's got a credit card, not a debit card. <laughs> so you're going to bump him on that. Personal jabs aside, thank you for that observation. I will investigate this. Later. What shall I do with the fledgling, my prince? What is your recommendation, my chef? Ah, force him to sing Katy Perry on karaoke. Sober. Then, and only then, will I allow him to exist in this mortal place. The traditions are clear. Thou shalt only sire another. Sire? Sire another with the permission of thine elder. If thou createst, why did we talk like this? Another without thine elders, leave both thou and I. <laughs> Progeny shall be slain. I am ready to fulfill my duty. Stay your hand for just a moment longer, Cordier. It is... I risk so much counsel on this. Make sure everyone is it. Can you make up your mind, though? I don't mean to be that guy, but is it Kadir? Are you going to call me Sheriff? I like Sheriff. I get to feel like Clint Eastwood. He's pretty cool. Okay, okay. Of so course. I'll call you Sheriff from now on. He seems strangely relieved. The prince leaves the main showroom, and a handful of people follow her out. You're about to ask this quad sheriff. Thank you. All the <laughs> go back up. Uh, you're about to ask the sheriff what all this talk of tradition and councils was. When the red-haired woman approaches you, approaches the two of you. Sophie. Sheriff. I oh, was wondering on. if I could have another word with you, fledgling. Well, I mean, you gotta think about how old they are. What for? Come on. See, she's lowering her voice even more. I gotta lower it another octave. Come now, Kadir. Sheriff. No, I haven't entered the discussion of that yet. No, no, you can call me Sheriff, though. Okay, come now, Sheriff. We shall know what the verdict is going to be. Let me speak to them. You might not have to stain your hands tonight, after all. Her words grab your attention. His face is hard to read. Did you ever do voice acting for, like, Harry Potter? You know that one that they say cannot be named? Like, you you sound like you could do something with him. What do you mean, shut up? Just, do me a favor, can you say, the boy who lived? The boy who lived. <laughs> That's it, I'll go get my sword. <laughs> I didn't even read the other thing. It's okay, it's not important. <laughs> like most of the inner monologues, it's not important. I know, but whatever. He steps out of the room the way he came, and you are left in the showroom with the woman in the red dress. She takes you to the side. Your eyes remain around the guest's follow you. Sorry. Well then, pledging, you are in quite the pickle. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, no, wait. it seems like you dialed him. What do you mean? I still don't understand why, what my crime is here. Poor thing, this really isn't your fault, but if you want to get out of here in one piece, you need to understand one crucial fact that seems to have eluded your grasp. Last night, you became a vampire. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, what? Oh yes, I am well aware of how ridiculous that sounds. It's the reason why we have the nice words of kindred being embraced, having a sire. The fact remains. Gonna hurt your voice that time. The beings called vampires, you're looking at them. They're us. 
Caucasian looking at you. You need to your harsh tones. Patriots are pale, real pale. Most holding glasses of wine. No, not wine. That's not the right thickness. And not the right color either. They're trying to come up with you're trying to come up with something sensible that that's say but you're drawing a blank. It makes a morbid kind of sense. You drank blood last night, there is no denying it. And your breathing has not returned, your heart remains still. A vampire. Two voices in your head start battling for supremacy. One of them slowly beginning to put everything that happened since yesterday together comes to the conclusion that no matter how insane it might seem, nothing but she, what she says makes sense. Jeez. The other voice just keeps saying, what the fuck? What the fuck? On repeat. That's stupid, dude. You're stupid. Your surprise is open up, plays out by design. Quadir, I, sorry, yeah. Sheriff. Sheriff, you are so right. Sheriff, deliberately keeping you in the dark enough, if we do nothing, you'll be cut down as sure as day follows night. But I'm here to offer you a chance, a way out, under one condition. I will take you under my wing if you're lucky. The prince will be in a good mood tonight, and your deference to Sheriff will... Uh, hold on. To Sheriff will work in your favor. She might agree to this, but only if you swear fealty to me. Your first job's gonna be to find my voice box. I gotta wait, it went too fast. I'm not 5,000 years old anymore. <laughs> I'm not making this up lightly as your patron. I take responsibility for you. Your actions will reflect on me. And if they reflect negatively, well, I will make sure you face the consequences. What happens if I agree? Suppose I say yes. What happens then? Then you're under my wing, dumbass. <laughs> it's so stupid, like... You survive, hopefully, obviously, or not, depending on the prince's whim. I'm giving you a chance, not the guarantee. You know, you can't really give those anymore or else you get sued. You know, I mean, you'd be dead, but someone can yeah. still sue. But if you take me as your patron, I'll be your guide in this new reality and you will assist me like a... Childe would be with the sire, you know. Steps and hushed voices that we heard from the side of the room. You see the prince and her council are returned from the room. The sheriff appears downstairs as well and starts walking towards you. When you hear the bad luck asked to be spared, I will intervene. Remember my condition? She flashes a heart melting smile towards the sheriff, who does not smile back. The sheriff in Macklin's suit is now complimented. Was that complimented? Yeah, yes. Complimented by a curved, oriented looking metal scabbard fastened with a colored sash around his waist. It would look vaguely ridiculous if it wasn't surprisingly intimidating, first and foremost. The sheriff takes his place next to you and observes as the prince takes center stage. Loyal kindred. <clears throat> kindred of New York City, Caramella gathered. Here tonight, I have made my decision regarding this fledgling. I want you to know that this was not an easy decision to make, for your part you have not done anything to earn our ear. I do feel genuine sorrow for what must be done. You are keenly aware that these nights <coughs> we need to close our ranks and trust wisdom of the elders and our traditions more than ever before. There is no place for tolerating this. What? Dissent? Mm hmm. When our very existence is under 
constant threat. It's called sunscreen paints. <laughs> Although I acknowledge some of my counsel's divergent opinions on this. She takes a look specifically at one of the people who left the room before a rather plainly dressed shy looking man whose skin has somewhat healthier tone. He bows his head into ferns. Mm-hmm. I hold the final authority over this horrendous fate, and I declare that while their embrace did, might be the side's responsibility in their absence, there is prodig is their prodigy that must be punished. This exodus final death is to be resolved. Persistently. Presently. Presently. Sheriff! He heard his creeping sounds the sheriff has unsheathed his curved sword. It is a beautiful detailed blade which ex which you expect most of a worth a small fortune, but your sharpness makes you freeze up. Go out, bottom of the ninth. Uh, I don't... I think I'm trying to explain to you football. Um, do you like the sword, though? I mean, hey, I, got it, I got it over there in Canal Street. It was actually a pretty good deal, yeah. You know, you see the gems and carved how right much? here? How much? <laughs> Don't never ask a man how much he paid for a sword. Nobody. Go up. Ah! Okay. His quiet mumble is audible to nobody but you. As his eyes meet yours, you note just a hint of sadness in his, in his constants. One that quickly vanishes to give away. A grim determination. And he's out to bat, you know, for hockey. <laughs> you go play some hockey with Randy Moss. You will not get another chance to speak up. I'm sorry. Ask for mercy. You make your choice. I don't want to die. Spare me, please. Prince, if I may ask to stay in the sheriff's hand for a while longer. The sheriff looks at Prince, awaiting her response. The sword is still hanging above you, threatening to fall at the moment's notice. It is something you